The Artemis 1 Orion capsule that splashed down off the coast of Baja, California over the weekend has arrived in San Diego. KUSI's Ali Wagner is at Naval Base San Diego with more. Hey, Ali. Hi, where we are actually standing aboard the USS Portland here right now, and I'm joined by Melissa Jones, who is part of the recovery team here. So first I'll have uh, Sierra kind of turn around and show us, show you, because we are right here um, next to uh, the capsule itself. So talk a little bit about going and the steps that it took to get it to this point and getting it on the ship and what that was like. So we had to go out to see where it was going to come down, um, and we heard capture from the helicopters. They saw it coming in through infrared and three main parachutes came off and it landed in the ocean. It slows from 24,000 miles an hour down to 300 and then the parachutes come out and it hits the, hits the water at 24. So it's quite an engineering feat. Um, and then the, the small boats that are in the open water, they do their assessments and make sure that there's no hydrazine or ammonia leaking and attach a collar to it. And we tow it into the well deck of the ship and the Navy recovers it. And talk a little bit, because I've been here before, back in 2018, when you guys were doing tests for this, and the collaboration that this takes in order for this to happen. I mean, there's so many entities that come together to do this. There are, yes. Yeah. So we work primarily with the U.S. Navy, um, helicopters, divers, the ship, um, and then we bring a weather squadron from the Air Force, and then it's all integrated for us by um, First Air Force Detachment 3, who basically puts the whole package together and helps us execute. And talk a little bit, because I know that you guys kept the capsule in the water for, I believe, six hours to get some of those readings, where once you do have astronauts, people inside the capsule, it'll be more like two hours, correct? Correct. So we need all the data that we can get in order to fly astronauts on Artemis II. So we took three hours of data and thermal data to see how hot it would get in the capsule after reentry. Did a lot of beacon testing in case there's an emergency so we can find them. But uh, we have a requirement that we need to get the astronauts out into med bay within two hours um, post splashdown. We think we can beat that pretty significantly. Um, but this mission was all about calm, steady, protection of hardware, data gathering. And talk a little bit about some of those, because I did hear, yes, the capsule inside was somewhere between 60 and 74 degrees. And talk about some of those readings and how they looked as you're kind of coming off and now have had, what, 48 hours to essentially look at them. Yeah, so we are still doing data analysis back in Houston, so I don't have a lot of that information. We did take a reading on, on the outside about two hours after. It was about 96 degrees. That is not indicative of what it is inside the capsule. Um, so I don't actually have that data, but we are looking at all of it to make sure that we understand before we put people in what it's going to look like. As far as you, from everything I've heard, this has been a complete success. For you, this is just the beginning, though, I would imagine, in some regards, because it's like, okay, now we get to move on to the next step. Yeah, so this has been, a, I would say, almost a picture-perfect mission in almost every way. It was amazing. I worked the space shuttle program, and this was very, very clean. Um, but this is just the beginning. This is the first flight, first test flight of this capsule on this rocket that was um, uncrewed. And so the next step is for us to put people on board, and we're, we're ready. Yeah, I would imagine. I mean, as a little kid, I'm sure this was a dream come true. To get the opportunity to come and be a part of this has got to be amazing when you know that this is part of history. Absolutely. So, yeah, my parents worked in the space program. I grew up watching rockets launch, so it was always kind of my dream to be a part of the space program. And now, I mean, this is huge. Only one person gets to be the first NASA recovery director, and that's me. Amazing. Congratulations. A really cool experience. Great to be up here, and thank you so much for chatting with us. Absolutely. Guys, we'll send things back over to you. Allie, I don't know if uh, she's still available to stick around, but I'm wondering if she could sort of describe what we're seeing on the outside of the capsule. Uh, it's hard to tell because it's a little backlit uh, from what we're seeing here uh, in studio, but uh, I'm yeah, wondering if like, maybe the there's sensors, sensors or something. Uh, she had to go on to her next one, but I will I will ask somebody okay. else. I will follow <laughs> up with you and what you're seeing. Uh, she did talk about the temperature getting up to 96 right. degrees was the reading that they did get off of it. Um, so I'm sure, I mean, you're kind of seeing, yeah, it looks a little bit like, hey, it had to go <laughs> through the atmosphere to come back and obviously gets very warm. And I have a feeling that that's kind of what you're getting a glimpse at. Yeah, I was impressed. It was only 96 yeah. degrees. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I wonder if it's maybe some of the deterioration that took place and if that's, it's just kind of mm -hmm. hard to tell with the lighting, but very exciting, yes. great to see. I mean, this is history in the making. Yeah.
All right, Allie, thank you so much. We'll check back in with you in just a bit. Thanks, Allie.